welcome to an episode of today's takeaway, a collection of the most bizarre things in the world. Today, prepare your goosebumps for the scariest parasites that hack into the host mind. So, without further ado, let's check it out. Number one, ant pathogenic fungus. Ants are born navigators and masters of foraging for food. But once infected by the fungus called Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, some ants for the first time lose their way home. This happens more than often to Camponotus leonardi ants in the tropical rainforests in Thailand, Africa, and Brazil. Stay tuned to find out the fate of these poor victims. This is how it works. After a spore of Ophiocordyceps unilateralis finds a host, it takes only three to nine days to fully develop into fungus. Just before death, the fungi initiates the zombification, making the host wander away from his home with no coming back. Now, what happens to these little zombies? They would crawl up 25 centimeters on a tree where it is humid enough for fungi to flourish and continue their life cycle. The host, however, do not enjoy such a happy ending. They would move to the underside of the leaf and take their last breath there, silently. But the misery doesn't stop there. In 24 hours, fungi would grow from the body of the dead animal. The lay spores on the floors of the rainforests where ants often go by. And you know the rest of the story. You might find Ophiocordyceps unilateralis somewhat similar to the parasite in the sci-fi movie Alien, but on a more horrifying scale actually. When the alien creature breaks out from the chest, this killer fungus chooses the heads of the ants to finish his work. Number 2. Kamikaze Horsehair Worms This type of worm can reach 30 cm long, but definitely not like one of your most favorite spaghetti. Sorry for planting that idea in your head. But before reaching that size, it needs to nest inside a cricket or a grasshopper. And believe me, it is not as easy as for Ophiocordyceps unilateralis. First, the larva of Kamikaze Horsehair Worm have to be eaten by the larva of another insect like the mosquito. Even plankton in the water would do. When the hosting larva matures, they come out of the water and get eaten by grasshoppers or crickets. Not until this happens does our warm larva activate. After spending a while on land, these worms will try to find their way back to the water at the end of their life cycle. This is when their true ability manifests, as worm penetrates the host nervous system to fox the host to jump in the water. After these crickets and grasshoppers die drowning, horsehair worms would come out of the stomachs, start laying eggs, and a new parasitic life begins. So next time, watch out if you come across some grasshoppers or crickets floating on the water surface, because it is impossible to tell if crickets are infected just by looking. To add to the horror of this worm, Ben Hanel, the researcher from the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, when it's 32 worms are coming out from a stomach of only one host. Number 3. Seculina barnacles If you think you're impressed already with those two parasites, don't be so sure. Securina barnacles infiltrates inside of the crab while finding a gap between the contact points of the chile. After tearing down the hard layers of shells on the outside, the Securina barnacle attaches itself to the body of the host. In this way, it looks more like a snail than a barnacle that spends its whole life attaching itself to a cliff or under hull of a ship. Once inside, Securina barnacle has nothing to do but feast on the victim and reproduce. What's even more scary is that mature Securina looks like a tiny egg moving on the body of the crab. This chosen crab has the honor to nurture millions of Securina larvae, and in return, the gurnet of the crab gradually disappears. At the same time, the chili stops growing, and the abdominal segment gets fatter due to larvae. Number 4. Green Branded Brood Sack if you see a snail having two bright eye stalks, wiggling with emerald green or olive green stripes, and the top being covered with ash grey spots, take a good look at it. That is not any usual snail. In fact, this snail has been infected by the brood sac. 
These snails are only the intermediary hosts in the life cycle of the brood sac. First, they would find a way to crawl up to the top of the snail's eye stalks, which makes these snails more yummy in the eyes of the birds nearby. In a research back in 2013, two biologists, Wanda Wielowska and Tomasz Wielowski from the University of Wokrow, Poland, noticed the abnormal behavior of some snails. It is concluded that these snails were infected by brood sac, and they would try to crawl up on trees, exposing themselves to birds. And the ultimate target of these brood sac is the stomachs of birds. Here, they give birth and lay eggs. The cycle of infection continues as the birds migrate. Number 5. The Braconid Wasp Parasites of Ladybirds Eggs are one of the favorite foods of predators, so how can animals protect their eggs from dangers? A type of wasp has its own way. But let's talk about the ladybirds with cute spots on their backs. They don't get bullied around very easily. When attacked, they would release a terrifying toxin. The spots on their backs also warn other predators to not mess with them, as they are poisonous. And this is where the wasp takes advantage of the ladybirds, with just one prickle. An egg would be left on the exoskeleton of the ladybirds. When the egg of the wasp hatches, the larva would slowly eat the organs of the ladybird before punching a hole on the stomach of this poor animal to begin its cocooning process right under the leg of the ladybird. Now the ladybird turns into the unwilling bodyguard for the cocoon under its stomach. These bugs would suffer pain to protect the animal that is feeding off its body to death. It seems that the toxin that the larvae of the wasps messed with the nervous system of the birds. Number 6. The Emerald Cockroach Wasps With its shiny emerald body and dark red spots on its two legs, the Emerald Cockroach Wasps in the tropical areas of Asia, Africa and Pacific Ocean is a magnificent insect. However, they are not that awesome to the cockroaches nearby. With the size one-sixth that of cockroach, the emerald wasp does not see cockroaches as predators but prey. By only a paralyzing prickle, the wasps can hack in the nervous system of a cockroach through a chemical transmitting signals between neurons. The cockroach is then zombified. After paralyzing the poor cockroach, the wasp sucks all the nutrition inside the body of the host, bites off the artina, which acts as the navigators for the cockroach. Now, the wasps can lead the cockroach anywhere it wants, just like us taking our dogs out for a walk. The next destination of the wasps would be its nest, where the stomach of the cockroach would be filled with unhatched wasp eggs. To guard its prey, the wasps would lock the cockroach up in a cave made of small stones. But even without it, the cockroach doesn't seem to even try escaping. When the harvey of the wasps hatch, they would only have to feast off the body of the poor insect before tearing down the other parts. Number 7. Toxoplamosis eukaryotes. This is probably one of the most famous parasites. This is because the host of these single-cell eukaryote dames that usually inhabit around the areas where humans live. The primary victims are mice. According to a research in 2007, the mice infected by the eukaryote lose the sense of fear against cats. Instead, they seem to be attracted to the pheromone in the urine of cats. Infected mice tend to be more bold around the way cats in lift, and the parasite's ultimate goal is to get inside the stomachs of the cats. As cats are popular pets, the number of people infected by the eukaryote is quite high. As yes, you heard me, these things do infiltrate human body. There are 30 to 60 percent of people infected by these eukaryotes. However, whether this type of parasite has any effects on the mind of human remains undiscovered. A research in 2006 by Kevin Lovery from the Department of Geological Exploration in Santa Barbara, California, US, showed some changes in the behaviors of people infected. Let's just hope this is just a coincidence, or we people should be afraid around cats. Number 8. Rabies this might be the first time you hear someone say rabies virus is a parasite, but it is confirmed by biologists. Levy Morin at Humorich University in Atlanta, Georgia, US, said he would consider the virus of the rabies or flu as parasites. This is because they degenerate the physical condition of the host. 
because they achieve their purposes at the host expenses. Rabies is undoubtedly one of the most terrifying diseases that originate from ancient times. It takes away the sanity and what can classify humans as humans themselves. The rabies virus spreads via the saliva of the host, usually through an open wound from getting scratched or bitten. It provokes the infected host, usually bats or dogs, even humans, and make them aggressive. Here's the shocking part. Rabies is able to make the host scratch or bite others for the virus to spread. Doesn't this sound familiar? Are you sure you are free of parasites? Or that people will not someday be controlled by these tiny killers? Whatever the other is, remember, over half of living entities in this world are parasites, and the number could be rising. And that's it for today's takeaway. What do you think? Which one will you the most? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share our video to support our next product. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.